Hi everybody, welcome to Watercolor Wednesday and Dandelion Cottage. I'm Leslie Watkins. I'm just getting set up here. So as you can see, it's daffodil time. So we've got all sorts of beautiful daffodils blooming. And the robins have been hopping all over the lawn and the birds are starting to sing. So I think, um, I think we're full scale into spring finally, though we do have a lot of rainy weather right now. But that's okay because you know what they say, April showers bring May flowers. So I guess that's what's happening. I was looking through my garden sketchbook from last year and um, and you can see I've got pictures here of the robin and the snowdrops, pussy willows, the uh, early hellebores. The hellebores are blooming like crazy also right now. But I've also got this page and let me zoom you out a little bit so you can see better. out of the way. I've got this page I started with some of these beautiful, um, I think these were Narcissus type daffodils. And I think what I'd like to do is do a little bit of an echo over here with these beautiful yellow ones. So I'm going to grab my paint brushes and I've got a number two pencil. And let's see if I can arrange this so that um, we can get everything on the screen here. It's a tight squeeze. So I'm going to get my, uh, where's my, where's my little turtle paperweight? Let's get him holding down the page here. And I'm just going to put this underneath and make sure that we keep that page nice and clean in case I decide to do some painting over there also. And I'm looking to see if we're working and that looks just fine. Very good. So, um, what I'd like is to simply take one of these beautiful daffodils. Getting my water containers, so. switched here so I want I want you to be able to see the color mixtures as I go. I'm using red, yellow, and blue. Okay, so just three colors, keeping it simple. And I'm going to place this flower right here where I can see it. Hopefully you'll be able to see it also. And I'm just going to do a, a quick pencil study. So figure out where the trumpet is going to be, get that angle. I can see down inside, I can see the anthers and the, the, um, the stamen. The trumpet is beautifully ruffled, so um, that will be a lot of fun to paint. And then the daffodil has uh, six petals. And what I want to do is be sure that I get the, the angle correct so that I can capture the character of this particular flower. The other thing to note is that three of the petals, the primary petals, 
are on top and then the the secondary petals are underneath so I want to make sure I get all those things overlapping correctly We gotta make this one a little bit bigger. There we go. Okay, so that's that's my basic sketch, and I know it's very light. I know it's hard for you to see, but you will be able to see it shortly. Um, I can look down inside of my my trumpet and see the bottom over on the right here. I want to make sure I get a little bit of that side view. Now the next thing I want to do is I just want to check that the center line of each flower is is describing the way the petal is is moving so these these petals are not flat they're kind of wavy they have some um, ruffles in them they have a kind of a, a raised center and all of those little details are the things that are going to make this um, make this study more more convincing. So I want to make sure I, I pay attention to all those things. And I also don't want to get too much graphite on my... I'm going to move this petal over. Let me get my eraser. Have all my kneaded erasers in a in a little Ziploc bag. This helps to keep them clean, but also it helps to keep them from the kitten who loves to grab these things and uh, run away with them. So over here, I'm going to I'm going to move this petal slightly. And the kneaded eraser is nice and soft, so it's, it's not going to abrade the surface of the paper. There we go. All right, so I'm happy with that. I also have a little bit of the stem showing through, so I can just sort of indicate that, and I'm just going to let that sort of trail off like so. All right, now... I'm going to go ahead and paint this, and I'm going to paint it in, in three stages. I'm going to begin with my lights, getting then my middle tones, and finally my dark tones. So I'm just going to begin with a very light wash of, of yellow. Get that dust off my brush. And I'm going to, I'm going to paint the entire surface of the flower with my yellow. Now what this this is going to do a couple of different things. First of all, it's going to moisten the paper so that it will accept the water better. And secondly, it's going to lock in my graphite lines. So the binding media that is in the watercolor paint, the gum arabic is going to act like a kind of a glue on the surface of the graphite, the pencil lines, and um, prevent them from uh, being, uh, I won't be able to erase them when uh, once the watercolor is dry. So if there's any any of the graphite line that's on, on the outside of where I just placed the paint, those lines I, I'll be able to erase if I choose to. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Now I'm going now I've got a stronger mixture of the paint. I'm going to go in and just begin to establish some of my shadow areas and my middle tones. 
the light in my studio, I, I have a north light studio, the light's coming from a north window, and that window is on my left side, and that helps me to control the light here in my studio and also ultimately to be able to depict the form of the subject that I'm working on. And if you'd like to learn more about um, painting with watercolors and um, depicting form and using light and shade and color mixtures and all the other things, please um, come to the watercolor card club page and you can find that on my website at dandeliancottagedesign.com. You'll see a link um, in one of the tabs there that says watercolor card club and you can learn all about how you can subscribe and learn how to paint a new subject every month. We have a live Zoom where you can ask questions and we look at your pictures and we talk about what will make them better. You can see what everybody else was, is doing and we all learn from one another. So it's a, it's a wonderful resource. And also we have a Facebook group that you can also post your paintings in and um, and that's where we put them for critique. So check out the Watercolor Card Club. We'd love to have you. You get a, a card kit each month, a new card kit. And, um, and every so often there's a, there's a little surprise in there. So check that out. All right, so what I'm doing is I'm just mixing up some green here. And uh, I know I'm a little bit off camera. Let's see if I can move this up a bit there we go so there's my kind of a medium green I'm gonna make that a little little warmer and again I'm just taking um, I'm cleaning my brush and I'm just taking the smallest amount and I'm just going to get that on my stem and let that fade off. Give that a little vignette. And I'm going to take a stronger yellow mixture, and this time with a with a touch of red. So it's uh, more of a deep yellow tone. And I'm going to Put that on my trumpet. The trumpet is is just a, a step or two darker than the petals. And when you look down inside, <clears throat> you can see a little bit of transmitted light coming through because the um, <clears throat> the flower is so delicate. I can also see a little bit of the um, that kind of papery sheath that was the covering for the bud, and that's sort of a um, sort of an ochre kind of a color. So I'm just going to mix all my colors together to get that, and it's something in that family. Put a touch of that sort of peeking out from under the flower. Just like so. Alright, so so I'm gonna zoom you in because I want you to see a little bit better now. I know that it looks very small on the screen, so let's just do that. All right, so that's what I've got so far. And 
and um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix up a kind of a neutral tone. So what do I mean by neutral tone? I mean something that's not um, not red, yellow, or blue, just a sort of a grayish tone. And um, and I'm looking at my flower. And I'm thinking that um, it's a it's just a tiny bit on the on the warm side, and I'm going to use this color to draw with. Let me get my flower back. And uh, and actually, I'm going to switch to my smaller brush now because what I'm going to do is I'm going I'm going to draw with my brush, and I'm looking for that fine tip. And this is a very nice uh, Red Sable watercolor brush. It's a Series 7, number 4, so it's a beautiful brush. And, um, and I know these brushes are expensive, but if you take care of them, they will last you for a very, very long time. And I'm just um, sort of sketching on top of my petals and describing the sort of um, the shape and the and the way these pleats they're not they're not quite pleats but they are definite um, what would you call them kind of wrinkles that help to describe the form and I can just sort of make my way around and uh, keep those marks as light or as dark as I want them to be. Now over here I have a, a cast shadow, so I definitely want to capture that. So there's the beginning of the cast shadow. And just a, just a few strokes, I can make my way around here and, uh, and my flower begins to have a lot of, of character now. It's starting, starting to look like a portrait of this specific flower. There we go. Now I'm still working very lightly and I haven't even begun to put my darkest tones on here yet. So I've got plenty of plenty of time to make any corrections or adjustments that need to be done. And um, and, and so this is one little specimen. So this is just a, a quick study of a, of a daffodil. Of course, if you want to do a more elaborate composition, you would do just the same. Just, um, it would just take you a little bit longer, but the process basically would be very similar. And when I look down inside the flower at the very bottom, it looks like there's a there's a little bit of green. So I'm just gonna drop in a hint of green, like so. And then finally I'm gonna grab a kind of a darker neutral tone. And this time it's leaning a little bit towards the cooler, cooler side. And I'm just going to use that to put some, um, some accents where these petals overlap. Down in there and here.
Now my stem has a, has a shadow side on it, so I can begin to indicate that. And it also, it also has some, some sort of grooves. It's not just flat, so I can show that texture. And, and obviously I'm undoing this in my, my watercolor sketchbook, but if you wanted to use something like this on a note card, I think that would be wonderful. Or if you wanted to, um, maybe you wanted to create a, um, one of the, those beautiful handmade gift boxes or a, um, a gift card holder, something special for Mother's Day. So you could take what you've, what you've learned here today and apply it to, to any number of other projects. Um, you, could, you could create your own designer series papers to use in your paper crafting projects. I've recently begun doing some scrapbooking, and uh, I'm just getting started. I've barely begun, I'm brand new to it. But you know, if you want to create a spread where you had some beautiful flowers decorating your, uh, how you know the sides or however it is that you're doing it, that would be loads of fun. So all sorts of ideas. All right, well, I think I'm just about done here. In a minute, I'm going to look and see if there's any comments or questions. So if you have any questions for me, please um, go ahead and, and post them in the comments. Say hi, let me know where you're tuning in from. Do you see signs of spring at your house? Do you have daffodils? Um, it's an exciting time of year. We've been, we've been cleaning up the yard. My, um, my wonderful friend Rachel has been helping, picking up all the sticks. We had a lot of ice storms, a lot of wind this winter, so there, there are lots of sticks around, and the tall man has been very busy pruning the apple trees. So we've had a lot of cleanup to do. And uh, the chickens are laying eggs like crazy. They're all excited. They always, they always um, get very intense during the uh, spring laying time because this is, this is what they look forward to. And uh, so I've got a couple of hens that are going broody. And no doubt Mama Zita, when the time comes, will, will come out, come off her perch and kick them out off the nest because she's the one that wants to be the, the broody hen. But she's, she's hilarious because she lets them start. And then when the time gets closer, she says, that's it. You're out of here. I'm taking over. And nobody's happy about that, but Mama Zita's boss. All right, so now um, all I'm doing is uh, some of these points on the tips of the petals um, are starting to get a little bit of age on them. They're starting to curl a little bit. They've got a tiny spot of, of uh, like a golden dark yellow and it's um, it's an opportunity to get another color onto the flower so I don't want to miss that and then finally I want to increase that cast shadow, so I'm going back into my mixture here. 
and we've got a nice nice warm accent and just let that disappear all right so that is my um my flower for today i hope you enjoyed that let's see if there's any questions um i see kelly and linda um but no questions right now if you have any questions you can go ahead and um add them later i'll i'll check back thank you so much for joining me today i hope you're having a beautiful spring day that um is bringing all the birds and the animals out and the and the flowers and uh, making you happy healthy and creative i'll see you next time tomorrow for paper crafting thursday at 12 noon and um and i've got some uh well I'm, i don't want to give it away but i've got some very fun little decorations that you can create for your journal pages that I think you're going to really enjoy. All right. See you next time.